Welcome to 2023, <laughs> Wellness Superheroes. <laughs> we are your hosts. I'm Annie. And I'm Jody. Welcome to our first uh, episode of 2023. Um, we have a couple of guests with us today we're really excited about. Bring on Kelsey Kenny, our um, favourite molecular biologist. And um, and she's brought with her a guest, Adrian Fraddle, <laughs> um, who are going to talk us through some cellular functions, cellular metabolisms, and um, some supplements that we probably don't really need to be taking anymore. And the science if- behind it. They're, they're two super nerds um, that have amazing backgrounds uh, in figuring out stuff. They do indeed. Yes. So without further ado, we'll bring them on. There we go. Welcome, ladies. Hello, ladies. Hi, everybody. Thanks for Hello. joining us. Thank you for Hi. having us. Since most people, if they've been following us, they know Kelsey. But if Kelsey, if you want to give a very brief um, uh, description of your background, sure. Um, yeah, when I was about uh, sixteen, I came down with a very rare blood disorder, and um, and it almost took me out. And I really wanted to know what happened and and why. And so I decided to go into um, biology so I could figure out how to make that not happen again for anybody. Um, and I studied that and then, uh, the crash happened and, um, I didn't get, I, I lost my biotech job out of, out of college. And then I worked at a health food store and got a, you know, kind of a, a informal education, so to speak for about two years, finding out about supplements and works, what works and what doesn't work. And then I kind of, you know, got worse and worse in my health. And I finally figured out I had Lyme disease and this was after I had children and my son started showing symptoms of uh, a pandas and special needs. So I've been trying to figure out our health situation ever since, and I've had some great success. And we'll talk about more about that today. All right. Fantastic. Well, Adrian, would you like to introduce <laughs> yourself? Give us a bit of your background. Yeah, sure. Um, my name is Adrian Frattle. I'm kind of an introvert, so this is my first podcast that I've ever done. But I, it's very important to me um, to get this information out to people and to tell a little bit about my background and how I came um, upon this information and to try and help people to understand what's really going on here as far as our, uh, well, I call it like our military, industrial, corporate uh, death cult, big harm death cult, because it's just very important to me. So I'm kind of stepping out of my introvert Idness and trying to do podcasts with Kelsey, who I met in Dr. Cat's group, and her and I just clicked right off the bat. <laughs> and between the two of us, we really put together some amazing connections. We each have our strengths and um, we amplify each other. So, and you have a background in biochemistry, is that right? Well, I um, I've always had a really deep fascination with all the sciences. Um, I mean, I was. In college, I took um, a lot of anatomy, biology, math, physics, chemi- chemistry, was a natural for some things, like especially chemistry and anatomy and different things, and math too. And um, unfortunately, in college, they don't teach quantum physics or the real physics, which I've since learned. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I've just always had a deep fascination with that. And I was always particularly obsessed with um any kind of encephalitis diseases or um, prions disease, which is where there's a misfolding of proteins in our brains. I mean, it really goes back to very young, a very young age. I was about, I don't know the exact age I was. My mother even tells a story and I distinctly remember it. We were in some kind of um, medical building and there was a lab and they had one of those doors where it's like glass so you could see and see what the people were doing and they were looking through microscopes and I just like I was just like like that is what I want to do like I just I just my mom still says like my whole face lit up and so I don't know I just always knew I wanted to um, help people learn knowledge through you know medical information and I knew I wanted to help people Um, so I graduated from the University of Delaware and I did go to take one semester in um, my master's degree, but it just, I don't know. I just, it just wasn't, it it just didn't click for me. And I just, my heart wasn't really in it anymore. Um, Now that I look back, I think, um, I think I just knew it was all bullshit. Um, (laughs) 
<laughs> but I mean, like I didn't know at the time, but I did, but it makes sense to me now because uh, I just didn't accept a lot of things, a lot of the things that they, they taught me in school, like how they, you know, doctors aren't allowed to say cure and they would always say there's not cures for diseases. And I just never, like, I didn't know what the cure was, but I just always had this deep um, burning desire, like that there has to be a biochemical answer. Like I just knew in my heart that, 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 it, that had to be the case. Um, so I think I just, um, I don't know, I just got burnt out with it and I just went on in matrix life and, <laughs> you know, uh, I worked for a vet for a couple of years. And so that was really, um, I really liked that a lot because it had a lot to do with, um, biology and chemistry and different things. So I really did enjoy that. And now that I, look back from the perspective of where I am now, I think that I was always meant to be on the outside of this industry and not on the inside. So at this point now, like I'm, I'm actually doing what I always had that desire to do, but I'm doing it from the outside. And in a way, like I'm glad about that because if I had gone to medical school and become a doctor and I knew what I knew now that I would have to quit because there's right. just no ethical way that I could, um, continue on with that. So I, I do feel like that um, a lot of, a lot of things make sense to me now in the direction that my life went. Um, so the same as Kelsey, I, I always knew there was an answer. I always knew there was cures. Um, I never imagined that it was so um, simple and so beautifully complex at the same time. Like I just, over the last three years, my mind is just literally blown off my shoulders like many times. <laughs> so what happened to me was I had, um, I had what's called a dark night of the soul. And um, I had a pretty bad one and it was uh, uh, what they call a foundational blowout. So all of the programming that um, really all of us are under to some degree, um, I was able to drop all that programming and just start with a clean slate and able to clearly see and process information without like a veil, like without that educational veil over my eyes. So what I'm able to do is I can make connections like over broad um, areas. I can clearly look at things or information and I see a lot of patterns and I see a lot of like absence of patterns. So it's just really been a process almost this was about three years ago. So it's been a process how to like reuse my brain because <laughs> it works in a different way now. And um, you have to be willing to let go of your ego to admit that basically, um, I mean, the one thing I love about chemistry is that was really kind of like the one thing that didn't lie is <laughs> you can't, you can't lie about chemistry. I mean, it is, it is what it is. So, you know, and, and biology somewhat, they can lie because they never really taught us how our bodies work. And um right. So there was a lot of lies in biology, um, but I just, I had to get to the bottom of it. Like I just had to get to the bottom of it. And I really truly feel that I have gotten to the bottom of it um, with CATS protocol. And so I was just going to go through um, and describe, you know, Kelsey and I are both going to take different topics and try and to explain to people what's going on here. And um basically how the doctors know nothing. I mean, they, they know nothing and I'll get into that in another page on my, <laughs> my presentation. So sorry, that was long winded, but that's all right. No, it was great. Thank you. So this, this um, episode is called suspect supplements. Um, the good, the bad, the ugly, which um, Kelsey and Adrian will take us through. Kelsey and Adrian, you guys um, are fast becoming our brains trust. So um, yes. thank you. We appreciate all your hard work and your knowledge, your understanding and your wisdom. Premise of this show is are the supplements um, you're taking really necessary when our biochemistry is so out of whack. Because of Dr. Katz's work, we've we've all come to the conclusion that niacin deficiency is practically the root of root cause of all disease and deficiencies. I'll hand over to you, Adrian. Okay. What it is, it's, it's, it's really just so simple that people, they just really have a hard time adapting um, to all that they've been programmed with to, to, of their understanding of what they think that they know, that they understand how our um, bodies work. And the medical community, I mean, they're, they're just so brainwashed at this point. Like, they don't even know at a very foundational level how our bodies work. They, they just have no idea. So all of the, the information 
that they know is based off a false foundation. Um, they don't understand that the body, the mind and the soul is all one and it needs to all be treated as one. So not only do you have to know the details, um, you know, to a subatomic level, but you also have to understand that our bodies, you have to treat our bodies, mind and soul as a complete unit. We're really, we are capable of producing like these very profound chemicals. Once our biochemistry is right in our body, we're able to produce these very profound healing molecules and they doctors don't understand that either. So when I did find CATS protocol, like I was pretty close to understanding the foundations of how our bodies worked. And then when I came across his information, it just all the puzzle pieces snapped into place. And I was like, this is the, the answer that I've always been looking for. He's really dedicated his life to try and, you know, he's been targeted. Um, he's been called crazy. He's been, um, they just come after him all the time, but he is a one man wrecking ball. <laughs> and I, I do believe that he is going to bring down big harma once and for all, even if we have to take it down brick by brick or steal one customer at a time, I really do believe that it's going to happen and it's going to go down in my lifetime. So, yeah, I think I mean, so too. I, I can't wait until that happens. So I'm just mm -hmm. doing whatever I can for my part to accelerate that so people can understand just really some simple truths that have been hidden from us. One of the big truths is, is our bodies are electric and people don't, they don't know that doctors don't know that I could get into all the details of it, but really you just need only one example is when you hit your funny bone and you feel all the electrical charge run through your body. I mean, that's your proof right there that our bodies are electric. And there's a couple good books out about that, that, um, we could put in the show notes later if anybody was more interested in that. The other thing is that we are perfect self healers, perfect self healers. And people cannot that they just cannot grasp that because they've been indoctrinated to trust people in authority. And these people do not have the right information. And you are taught, we're taught to like disconnect from our body and not listen to what our body needs. And once you start restoring your health, and you listen to your body, your body is going to tell you what you need to do. And instead, we're relying on false authority to tell us um, how we need to treat our body and what we need to do with our body. So we need to take that power back. And the perfect example of being a self healer is the moment you cut your finger, even with the paper cut, your body is already working to heal that paper cut. Um, why people wouldn't, you know, they, they just need to understand that we are perfect self healers. We can heal anything. And then the other thing that people don't understand and doctors don't understand is that all disease stems from inflammation. That's all disease. So what they've done is they've taken, they've just slapped fancy names on all these different diseases and syndromes and whatever you can think of. Like even in the news, the last couple of weeks now they're calling up, uh, Oh, they're calling um, Alzheimer's type three diabetes. Oh like, my god! So just so they can like slap and you know like sell another drug, make another test, um, like that. That's what they do. They just keep taking these names of these disease. They keep making up these names of diseases, but really all it is, it's all stems from inflammation. That's right. that's that's the root cause of all disease. So really all these disease names are just made up names for niacin deficiency is all right. they are. That's it. And it's very, I mean, it's very simple, but if you try to explain that to a doctor, they'll, you know, again, they'll tell you you're crazy. I and know. don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Um, they also don't understand how genetics work um, because epigenetics is the way that our body works. We have a template of our DNA and they've told us all these years that 98% of our DNA is junk. So, I mean, just think about that. Like, do you really think that you're this magnificent biochemical, you know, person is you're only using two or 3% of your DNA. So that just never made sense to me. And then when I, I came that. across, <laughs> when I came across epigenetics and realized that we all have a template and that it's just certain parts of our DNA that are not be not coding for proteins. And we'll probably have to do a, a different show on that because I've researched a lot into what they've done to cap off our DNA. Um, so we've been, we've been devolved. Uh, we haven't evolved. We've been devolved and they've slowly been turning off our portions of our DNA. So basically we're running on fumes at this point. I mean, you can only imagine how powerful 
our bodies could heal, even if a very small percentage of our DNA was was turned back on. And then also all health starts in the gut and they, they don't understand that either. So you have to restore your gut, which is gonna restore the rest of your health. And then the last thing I, I mentioned this before is just we just need to return to natural and, and listening to our own bodies and being our own authority, doing our own research. Um, it's, very, it's very important because we have to take the power back and we have to take it out of their hands because they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> right. So the first slide, uh, Dr. Katz talks a lot about pellagra and this, this, this speaks to the, to what I was saying about all disease is inflammation it starts with inflammation and then they just put different names for these diseases. So this slide shows you and pellagra is niacin deficiency. That's what it is. So I included in the show notes, um, a paper it's called, um, politics and pellagra and it goes through the different politics of how some of this whole mess started. Um, but you can see, I mean, I won't read it off, but you can see that basically everything stems from all disease stems from pellagra and aging as well. Yeah. And that it looks like it's just a duplicate, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it really does. I didn't even think about that, but yeah, it does. So, um, and we can get into that deeper at a different point too, but his protocol is literally reverse aging people. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's what's, that's what's happening. Okay. So, um, what I wanted people to understand before we look at this next slide is that we have a lot of different biochemical loops in our bodies and the main biochemical loop is, is B3 or niacin. So what's happening is, um, since we have inflammation in our body, it is very important to use the flush niacin and not the extended or, or extended release niacin. And the reason why, and people, if you go into a supplement store, they're going to tell you, oh, well, don't get the flush niacin because you'll, you'll flush. But what people don't understand is the flush is the therapy because what's happening is there's a third thermodynamic transmutation of energy and energy is energy, no matter what form it's in. So the inflammation is being transmuted into heat to be eliminated out of your body, to get out of your body. So that's very important for people to understand that they need to be using the niacin or the nicotinic acid that's immediate release because the flush is the actual therapy. What I was gonna go into on this um, niacin, it is the biological backbone of all, phys all physical life. So that's why it's the beginning loop of our biochemistry pathway. And so what they've done is, um, I mean, this goes back really far and I, I don't wanna get into a lot of details, but this really goes back to the primordial soup of when cells, you know, I mean, we'll get it. We can get into evolution another time, like what they told us and some other things that are, are, are wrong about that. But anyway, um, there's prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Um, bacteria would be an example of like a prokaryote cell and they lack a cell, a cell nucleus and a eukaryote, which is what we are. Um, they have a membrane bound nucleus that holds the genetic material. So I just wanted to mention that because that is the base that is the foundation and why niacin is one of the um, backbones of our biological existence. So what you're doing when you're doing his protocol is we're restoring this de novo pathway. And you can see that de novo means over again or anew. So what they've been doing to us is they've been turning our body, our base biochemical um, loop into bootleg pathways so that we can survive and not thrive. And so as we switch off, like we have this main um, niacin biochemical pathway. And as we mess that cycle up, which is the, the base cycle, then there's other biochemical um, cycles that get messed up as a result of damaging our um, foundational loop with the niacin. So that's what they do. They just, um, they're taking, they're taking, um, they're switching us from one, de novo pathway over to boot leg pathway so that our body can survive. Um, and I think what, what's the next slide we have up? Yeah. Okay. So this right here, if people could just really just take like an, I don't know, 30 minutes, an hour or something like that. I mean, to understand this slide, I mean, this is a very, very, very important slide and it shows you how our de novo or, or our pathway where we can renew, it clearly shows, how niacin works from the tryptophan 
all the way to the NAD plus and the sal and then the other side shows you on the right side, it's going to show you the salvage pathway. And that's what they've clicked our bodies over to is this salvage pathway. I did include um, that you'll have in the show notes, a very important study that um, breaks down a lot of this um, and explains it further on the NAD plus, because this is what's one of the things that's happening with people who are getting COVID and getting hospitalized is, is all due to this cycle and them not having enough reserves in their body. And um, that's why some people are getting really sick with COVID. Because so, they don't have enough niacin and they're going into the salvage pathway. Is that mm -hmm. what? Yeah. yeah. So they don't have any stores and mm -hmm. they're going into the salvage pathway. So once you deplete, because it's not renewing, it's not de novo. So right. once you, you, you know, you add on a few extra layers of um, things going wrong, then you're just going to use, you only have a limited amount to, for you to get through. Um, so that's when your body really starts because our bodies know how to triage perfectly. So right. our bodies are going to um, make sure the basic functions are taken care of, that our heart beats, that we breathe, like all the things that we do without thinking. And then it's going to triage from there. But um, when you get down to the end and you have nothing to renew, then that's when you take your last breath. <laughs> right. Exactly. Because your body just can't, it doesn't have the stores and reserves. And I didn't really put it in my notes and we could get into it another time, but our livers are supposed to have a lot of stores of different vitamins. And um, most people, I mean, and I read one study where we're supposed to have like some of the vitamins were supposed to have like six years of reserves in our liver and people barely have enough, you know, they have the people who are getting severely sick with COVID don't even have enough to keep them out of the hospital. And we're supposed to have wow. six years of stores. So we can get into some of those details at another time, but um, your, our bodies are just so depleted and turned onto these salvage pathways that when any one extra thing comes in on top of us, it just, it's, it's devastating for all the organs. And, um, that's why people get really sick. And yeah. So I think, um, there's another after this. So I was just going to talk a little bit more about the salvage pathway. There's one more, um, yeah, this one right here. So this is another slide. That's just, I wanted to show the first one first because it's like a little easier to understand, you know, it's not as complicated. And I know this looks complicated, but it's really not because if you look, on the right hand side with the tryptophan and the nicotinic acid, it's showing you how you can, um, you can go into the renewable cycle for your ATP. And um, I mean, I guess briefly, I should just let people know um, what ATP is. And ATP is adenosine triphosphate. And that's what powers, that's what powers everything in our body. That's our energy. Um, so, when you go through the de novo pathway, the basic of our biochemistry, you're able to renew and um, recycle the ATP to be, a, to be able to be used over and over again. Whereas if you go through the salvage pathways, you only have a limited amount until your body can, you know, make more, it can't, it can't renew it. So it does, it does look kind of complicated, but I just wanted to show it because you can see how we have the salvage pathway and the de novo pathway. It looks so much simpler that pathway, you know. Yeah, <laughs> it right? does. But yeah, and you know, down the down the bottom, it does show where it's the de novo, where it's renewable, the ATP. So if people, yeah. you know, and I don't want to bore people, and um, but I just did want to give them some foundation and some background, and I think it's important that people try to understand some of it. You don't have to yeah. know everything about chemistry or biology, but it is important to understand the foundation. Okay, so. Um, Next, I just wanted to show, I wanted people to understand the difference between niacin and nicotinamide. And um, I really didn't do notes on some of this because it has to do with the way that they use the research rats in um, when they do all this research because the rats are using nicotinamide and we're using niacin. So it's a, it's a way where they kind of are able to fudge the, um, and Dr. Katz figured out a lot of this, but it's a way that they're able to fudge the results of certain um, certain research because we don't run the same way as these. I mean, I think they genetically modified the, the personally, I think they modified them to hide the truth of how our bodies really run. Um, I mean, I do have some proof for that, but I do strongly feel like that. So it just keeps, 
it just keeps confusing people and keeps people in the dark because um, they're running these research things and the rat's metabolism and biochemistry works on a totally different system than ours does. So why, why is niacin uh, superior to nicotinamide? Well, the nicotinamide is what you don't want. I could go into a lot on that, but um, basically the nicotinamide is going to throw you into one of those salvage pathways. Mm -hmm. And also um, nicotinamide is what they make the majority of our prescription drugs from to throw us mm -hmm. into those pathways. And also nicotinamide is what remdesivir is. And that's why people's kidney and their livers are blowing out because um, they're taking this form of niacin and and that's how, I mean, that's how they're making all the money, like off of these pharmaceuticals, because I mean, I don't know what the percentage is, but it's pretty high that all of the pharmaceuticals are, are some form of nicotinamide and not niacin because they want our bodies switched off this de novo pathway and to get us onto the salvage pathways. Because once you get off that um, original base you know, de novo pathway and onto the salvage, there's other, there's a lot of other things that happen. And it's just like a slow progression of um, surviving is what it is. It's surviving and it's not thriving. And we were, we were, we were not created to, you know, we're, we were created to thrive, not to survive. Exactly. Um, so, oh, well, I had a little more on that. Um, it, it, I just wanted people to see the difference between like how precise chemistry is and to understand that it's just a very small difference between the two and what a big difference, you know, that is in the body when the body uses these molecules to synthesize other compounds. So I just wanted people just to see how very small of a difference makes a huge, it's, it's just such a, I mean, it's like night and day. So I just wanted people to be able to. The OH versus the NH2, right? Mm -hmm. yep, yeah. Cause the NH2 is an ad, a, a mean and then the um, OH is an alcohol group. And um, these, it's just like a functional group that's hanging off, but just the difference is like night and day between the two. So I just wanted people to get like a visual of, very, you know, looking at it from like a molecular level to see, right. to be able to see. Okay. So we're going to, we're going to start going through some of the supplements based on that information that Adrian so um, well, she said it so well and so articulately about um, why we either don't need to supplement or we might be using the wrong forms or when to supplement um, different uh, popular supplements that that we know a lot of people take right now. And the first two is the NAC and glutathione. And I know you, that kind of has something to do with what you were just talking about, Adrian, right? Yes. Um, I believe this one is, is um, Kelsey, I hope, hopefully this is yours. Is this yours? Cause I don't have a lot of notes on this, but I can just comment that the NAC is like a precursor. It's, it's, it's taking something that's in the middle of that loop that I was describing instead of starting at the beginning. So, um, it's, it's not what you want to do. You want to start at the beginning of the de novo pathway. Right. And it's not bad to take, right? But it's just... Uh, well, like eventually it can be bad because it's going to leave you on one of the salvage pathways. Oh, and okay. I think that people take it, they probably feel better to begin with, but ultimately it's not. Your body's going to be able to, to run through that whole pathway if you just start at the beginning with the nice and your body's going to, your body's going to do that for you. Okay. That makes sense. And the, I know a lot of people take these IVs too, the IV NAC and IV glutathione. So, mm -hmm. um, so Kelsey, what do you have to say about this? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm one of those people who was taking weekly IVs and that was one thing that they gave me is glutathione and it didn't really help. So yeah, I would, I, I didn't look into this one too much, but I just know that, um, Glutathione, it's not really orally available. They do have this awful tasting paste that you put under your tongue and it's expensive and you have to get it from um, a, a physician, basically, what do they call that? Those, um, I don't know, physician level supplements or something like that. You have to get it in a doctor's office or functional medicine office. And then the NAC, that's hard to get now too. I think they they were flirting with, with banning it. I don't know if they actually did. But sometimes when they do that, it's a reverse psychology thing. 
and you have to look at what, what, why now, why this NAC, it's been out for, you know, 20 years. Um, and I, I think it does help, but it's another symptom suppressor. Probably it's getting in, in the wrong part of the pathway. And since it has sulfur in it, it can help with detoxification a little bit, but if you're mm -hmm. niacin deficient, it's again, it's, we're going to be saying this a lot. It's not really going to solve the problem. And that's really all about, I have to say about that. Calcium and iron. Okay. Um, as far as, as far as the iron goes, that's not something that, um, well, we're supposed to be getting it from our diet and I mean, it's, it's hard. Some of this is hard to say because they've, they've um, depleted and ruined our food supply so badly. Right. I mean, I, I would defer to Dr. Katz on whether or not you have to supplement with it. He did have it in the protocol for a short period and, but it was important to take with the niacin. Um, almost, the iron. I, yeah. Iron. I would say dangerous to take without the niacin, but when he did have it in the protocol, like I really liked it. Like I felt a flush deep, deep in my bones. And it was just, I mean, it was, it was nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the, the main point is, is that a lot of people think that you can just supplement with something, but it, it's really not as simple as that. Um, but the good news, the good news is, is that our bodies, again, we're just like these amazing biochemical vessels and our body knows exactly what to do when it's provided, um, you know, with the right foundation. So, What's happening is, is that there's something called ferrous iron and there's ferric iron and fer ferrous iron is, has two plus electrons and ferric iron has three plus electrons. So it's just a difference of one electron um, attached to this iron. Uh, the, the Fe two plus ferrous iron is water soluble. That's the kind of iron that you want in your body. But as you're niacin deficient and um, I'm trying to think if I, I think I did put a paper on that. I, I no, wait a minute. It was vitamin D, but I have some papers on um, iron too, for anybody who wants to dig into this further, but the um, Fe three plus ferric iron, that's water insoluble. Okay. So that's what a lot of our body has this type of iron in it and it needs to be converted back to the ferrous iron. And so that's why when people are on the protocol and they start getting into it, they will notice that their teeth get whiter, the whites mm -hmm. of their eyes get that's whiter because your body is taking the, your body does this. It's, it's taking the wrong form of iron inside your body and it's turning it into the right form inside your body. So if you think about it, like iron, you know, rust and stuff, like it's going to be discolored and everything because it's, it's, it's water. I'm sorry. I said water soluble. I meant water insoluble. Mm -hmm. The wrong form of iron is water insoluble and the right correct form of iron is water soluble. Um, so as you restore the niacin, um, your body's going to, it's going to know exactly what to do. And it's going to take care of that and convert the iron to the proper iron, to the proper form. And the iron is so important uh, to be functioning properly in our body. And so that's why I encourage people who are going to try the protocol to look at their whites of their eyes and their teeth, and they will clearly be able to see that they're converting this shit iron in their body into the proper form that's going to, um, allow iron to do the things that it needs to do in the body. And I think because it doesn't lactoferrin help with that as well. Well, the lactoferrin binds to the um, niacin to form a complex. And um, I mean, I guess, yeah, I guess you could say it helps with that. I, oh, directly with the iron you're saying. Yeah. I, I believe he, I remember him saying that it helps, um, helps you um, absorb iron correctly in your body. Um, I mean, I wouldn't doubt it and I would always defer to him. Um, but his group moves so fast sometimes, like I'm frantically printing I research know. papers and highlighting them and trying to read them and stuff well, like that. I'm but Andy and I are like, um, so, you know, every day we're like, did you see this? Did you see that? What, what do you think about that? You know? Yeah. It's like the wild west in there, but it's, right. it's like, great. It's great. I love yeah, it. It's amazing. Um, yes. Yeah, so much information. Yeah. But, um, I, I mean, I wouldn't doubt that. I, I don't, I, I don't know specifically, um, yeah. You know, I, I do need to catch up on some of the lactoferrin because I know he was talking about the hydrolysis, hydrolysis and, oh, Kelsey's raising her hand there. And I told Kelsey's like, okay, we'll read it up and, you know, give me the cliff notes or whatever. So I, I do, I have some things on my list that I need to catch up on in his group. Um, I think I remember what's going on. So um, lactoferrin, what it, a uh, part of what it does with iron and you hear that fair, that, that, um, that word in there from the ferric ferrous. Right. 
Um, what it does, a, a big part of its job, in addition to helping escort niacin through the um, through the gut and through the body, is it denies bad bacteria um, iron because most bacteria need iron to grow and they won't grow without it. So what this does is it takes it and it holds it on for you. So you, bacteria don't use it and ha you have overgrowth with that. So that's another big part of its job there. So I just wanted to chime in with that. Awesome. All right. Uh, so what about the calcium? What's what's the relevance with calcium and iron there? Um, well, once the, the biochemistry returns, um, once you restore that, we heal your gut and restore back to it, um, it does have some to do with the iron, but it has more to do with um, flor uh, fluoride, that they fluorinate, fluorinate our water, which I'm sure that everybody's aware that that's like not good and they should not be, um, you know, they'll have to do their research on their own, but they should not be letting the dentist put fluoride in their on their teeth. They should be using fluoride free toothpaste and they should um, consider getting some kind of filtration system in their house to take the fluorine fluoride out of the water. Um, also we get it like our skin is our largest organ. So it's also in our municipal water. So when you're taking a shower, you're also getting it in that way. So it's like, it's kind of like you can't really escape it totally, but you don't want to um, add to it. Um, but what, what, what the whole agenda behind the uh, fluoride is, well, there's many agendas. First of all, it makes people like docile cheap. <laughs> and there's a lot of there's a lot of other agendas too. What happens is is when you eliminate fluoride as much as you can, um, it take it 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 you're, you biochemically are able to take the calcium because people think oh well, I'll just take more my burnt bones are but I'll just take more calcium. But again, it doesn't work like that because a lot of this stuff has to work endogenously with inside your body. You can't just take take a supplement or something you have to have the foundation of your body right and your gut healed for this to to work right um so what that what it does is once um some of that starts to be restored and you eliminate the fluoride a lot of the calcium will return back to your teeth and your bones where it's supposed to be um not floating around in your bloodstream and it also has to do with um there's a there's a channel that's on on the cells um that allows things in and out of the cell. So if, if, if your calcium's all jacked up and your, your fluoride is blocking it, then you're gonna, there's a lot of problems with transporting nutrients um, back and forth across the cell because these channels are all jacked up on your, your cell surface. Wow. Yeah, it, it gets pretty deep. I mean, but the, the good news is, is that once you, you know, reach return to homeostasis or flip that switch towards homeostasis. I mean, again, our, our bodies are like truly amazing and people need to understand that and not listen to what these doctors are telling them. Like, yeah. I mean, it's just, well, it's they've just, made, they've made so many people sick with the pharmaceuticals. I mean, it's terrible. So many, people, so many people come to me and their guts destroyed. I mean, their health's destroyed. They're on all yeah. these pharmaceuticals and they're hunched over. And I mean, it's just terrible. What's it happening? is. It's really just sickening and I don't know how they can continue. I mean, I just, I mean, I'm just like an average everyday person and I figured it all out, you know, and I didn't go to right. medical school. And so if I could figure it out, then they very easily could figure it out. So either they're so brainwashed at this point or their ego is so big or they have too many Porsche payments, then yeah. they just, they don't want to know. So right, they don't want to know, but it's yeah. our responsibility. I mean, me, I'm speaking for myself. It's my responsibility to do the best I can to, get people interested in this and to get them to start research because don't take my word for it. And I know it's complicated, but um, people really do need to spend the time to start digging into some of this stuff and really start yeah. to understand it so they can advocate for their own family and for their own, their own health. Exactly. That's, that's I think it's right. Sorry. Judy. Sorry. <laughs> no, go ahead. I was just going to say, it's interesting too that we have been so conditioned to think that, oh, you know, deficient in this, then just take that. That's and, right. and so it's very, very yeah. linear and myopic, and that's not how our bodies work at all. Yeah, well, the supplement industry is just another side of the other of the another coin, you know, because they're not going to, they don't want to tell you, oh, well, all we need to have in our store is lactoferrin and niacin. I mean, it'll <laughs> put them out of business too, right? You know, and I mean, again, that's kind of a balance because our food supply has been so destroyed at this point. Like, um, 
I mean, there might be some salts and, and different things like that that might benefit us to um, supplement with. But um, for the most part, in large, you're not, you, you, your body's going to do all this itself as long as you're providing the right nutrients. And I mean, we should all should be doing this too is, is shopping at smaller businesses and trying to find like local farms, dairy farms, um, organic farms. A lot of them have delivery service now. So it is an extra step and it is um, not as convenient as click and ship, but I think we all should be trying to support um, smaller businesses that are looking out for our best interest and, um, you know, trying to do the right thing and trying to provide a healthy food source. Absolutely. Yes. This one's me again, I think, right? <laughs> Kelsey, when is it your turn? <laughs> All right. So when I was working at the health food store, this is, uh, you know, I think it was 15 oh. years ago or so. Um, the They already were starting to trash folic acid, okay? So folic acid's been around for, I don't know, probably since the 60s or so, and they started telling pregnant women to take it. And it's been doing great. It's been doing pretty well at keeping neurotube defects at bay and keeping lower autism rates and cerebral palsy and things like that at bay. But they started trashing it real bad in, uh, when I was at the health food store. And even I was like, what's going on? It's been working so long and people, and it's water soluble too. So if you take too much, you just pee it out. Right. So why are they trashing this so much? And why are they bringing in these methylfolates and, and metafolin and quatrifolin and, you know, these various patented brands. And I didn't figure out till, you know, much later, um, you know, six or seven months ago that the reason is, is this is another example of, <clears throat> gunking up the works at the wrong point in the system. You know, if, if I have a, if I have a bakery and I'm out of flour, but I've got, I suddenly bring in, you know, tons of sugar, that's not going to make me any more bread, really. It's not supposed to happen like that or cake or whatever you're making. You're, you're bringing mm -hmm. it in at the wrong step. You're putting the eggs in the, at, at the wrong time. And you're, you know, you're not having a rise. I, I'm not sure how else to explain it, but one thing I always told people, and it was it was less expensive too, but one thing I always told people when they were going to choose a folate, folate or folic acid or whatever it was, I told them, hey, this is the raw material. So so your body needs several forms of, of, of folate, basically. But if you take the folic acid, that's like your wheat. That's like your starting material. And then your body, which is like Adrian said, an amazing biochemical, you know, beautiful machine in, in great balance and it can do great alchemy, it can make all those different forms. So give your body the raw material. Also, um, you know, we found out that Merck, <laughs> Merck actually uh, created methylfolate and owns the patent for it. So, <clears throat> So that's very suspect too. Is is why why are they getting into the vitamin business? I didn't, you know, wouldn't that put out put them out of business if it was such right. a great form? And then where did yeah? And then where did these MTHFR mutations come from? Why were they not an issue? Because they're really super common. Why does suddenly everybody have a problem with methylation? And that kind of goes back to what Adrian was saying um, with the the. Um, Diacin pathways, the de novo and the salvage pathways, when you have to use the salvage pathways all the time, you have to methylate all these extra products of inflammation, basically, that you've created to triage this and keep yourself alive. But that creates tons more things that you got to methylate. So you can't methylate properly everything that you need to. MTHFR probably didn't used to be a problem. It might even be a survival epigenetic strategy to keep us upright, you know, uh, despite the, uh, the assaults on our health at every front. Um, and there are papers out there saying that they supplement MTHFR uh, people uh, positive people, or you know, they have the, the gene that, that's supposed to be the mutant, right? They supplement them with plain old folic acid and they do just fine. And their folic acid levels go up. But what do they tell them? No, you can't have folic acid. You can't methylate. You can't methylate. But it's it simply isn't true. It's not, 
it's just not provable that that happens in showing that supplementing them folic acid, they do just fine and they, they raise their um, their folate blood levels and they're not having um, symptoms of, of hypomethylation um, <clears throat> is a true sign that this is, we got sold a bill of goods on the methylfolate and the MTHFR and just knowing that it goes back at least 15 years when they started, you know, and, and when they started this campaign against plain old folic acid. And then also when you have, um, and then, what was I gonna say? And then you have the MTHR, FR um, mutations coming up. And um, yeah, I think, I think that's all I need to say. There was something else, but I forgot, but maybe it'll come up later. But I think that's all I have to say about that. And, and folic acid is great. But again, you know, we, we, we have to go back and say, to the niacin and say that um, niacin is actually will help restore your folic acid levels. So you you may you might not even have to take that. You may benefit from it early on just to because it's gotten you know as the niacin goes down, the folic is going to go down. Um, but but once you're up, once you're up to that baseline level, your niacin can take care of that for you. And there might even be some gut species that help create that vitamin. Everybody, I think. I think most people know that your your gut your good gut species help with B vitamin production and are quite you know integral to that process and folic acid is 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 one of them as well. Oh, that's cool. And there's some studies that I've seen in the homeostasis group that of Dr. Katz that um, talks about how lactoferrin is really effective at building up the gut microbiome. Is that right, or is it both of them, niacin and the lactoferrin? I think it's both. Both. He does um, say that some people early on can benefit from the folic, um, but once you get the niacin and the lactoferrin complex going, he um, thinks that you can pretty your body can pretty quickly endogenously bring your folic acid up to where it needs to be. Um, so some people can benefit from it early on. Um, so what that they they estimate, and I don't really know what the real numbers are. I guess I could try and look them up, but I don't believe a lot of the numbers they tell us anyway. <laughs> but they say something like about forty percent of people supposedly have this MTHFR gene mutation. Um, I mean, probably. I mean that 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 number might be might be correct. Um, but I I think it's easily fixable, and um, I didn't get into some. We might have to save it for another time, but. There is a whole other level of things that are going on with his protocol that I kind of referred to when I said it was reverse aging because, and, and I might have mentioned this earlier and it would have to be another topic, but um, I have a lot of information on how they devolved our DNA and put codons, like start and stop codons on our DNA and how his protocol, because I told, I was said earlier that the template is still always there. Like it's just certain portions of our DNA that are not being coded for these um, different proteins to code these different, you know, make these different proteins. But um, his, his protocol is, is fixing a lot of that. So areas of the DNA or histones that weren't properly, you know, that your DNA is not wrapped around, it's actually repairing that. Um, so, I mean, it's pretty incredible. So I do think that um, the MTHFR gene I think it's epigenetics and I think it can be fixed because um, you so that that portion of your DNA is coding for the MTHFR protein and that helps your body to process folate. Um, and we folate is very important because we need it to make DNA and to modify protein. So you can see when people have that, um, that gene, I guess you could say, and it's not uh, working properly. It's pretty, it's pretty detrimental and it's pretty, it's pretty damaging. Um, but again, like we, Kelsey and I both talk about, we always want to focus on solutions because all the solutions are out there. So I don't want people to be, you know, discouraged about that because you can very, you can pretty easily turn that around. So like, that's the amazing, the amazing, wonderful part of um, a lot of the stuff that we're discovering. Um, and um, I think uh, next slide. Yeah, no, yeah. Just I just had that nice and restores and fixes um, the epigenetic template is still there. It could be restored or repaired, or you know, available to your body to be able to code that portion of your DNA again. Um, and full. I have just a couple more notes here. This that folate is a natural form of B nine in food, but again, I mean. 
have they been stripping out folate from our food? I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt it. Mm -hmm. um, so folic acid is the uh, synthetic form, the folate. Yep. All right. So vitamin D3, this one was um, a big hitter in um, a certain doctor in the freedom movement. Should we say his name? Zelenko's protocol. Well, actually, all, the, all the things after this are, are in the Zelenko protocol. And to me, the number one thing that people took during COVID or that were told to take was very high doses of vitamin D3. And gosh, I could talk for an hour on D3, but I'm not <laughs> going to. <laughs> but I, I fell for the D3 psyop too. <laughs> you know, because you see all these studies, it's like, oh, well, people who got sick, they're they're deficient in D3. So let's just take some D3 and it'll it'll fix all our problems, you know. But that's not how it works at all. Not at all. Not even close. Um, because you are deficient in D3 because you are deficient in B3. That's why you're deficient in D3. So once you, you restore your... Um, your, your, you know, restore that DNOVO pathway, your body's going to take care of, take care of um, the rest. And the other thing about um, vitamin D3 is it's, it's not a vitamin, it's a um, hormone. It's not, it's not a vitamin. They just told us it was a vitamin, but it's not, it's a hormone. And it's something that your body has to synthesize um, itself. And it can do it to, well, it can do it a couple ways, but the, the main way is that um, our skin, which is our largest organ in our body, has to be exposed to sunlight for our body to synthesize this hormone. And it also has to do with the way that light enters your eye and your retina at um, certain times of the day uh, with the red light spectrum, which is what you're going to get if you do early in the morning or when the sun goes down in the afternoon or, you know, when it's starting to set. And those are the two optimal times that you want to be outside and getting sunlight into your eyes. I mean, like I said, I could talk for hours because I think that the whole sunglasses, sunscreen industry is just a whole another industry that needs to be imploded from the inside out because, you know, that's why they make sunglasses cool and everything. And I fell for that too. You know, I, I got a lot of pair of sunglasses, but, you know, maybe midday, it wouldn't be a bad idea to wear them. But um, if you're driving to work and the sun's coming up, like, and you could just put your visor down and get away with not putting sunglasses on, like that's that's what you should be doing because we have to get, um, we have to synthesize our vitamin D from exposure to sunlight and getting sun into our eyes. Um, that's the way it needs to be done, but they, they're they not gonna tell you that. And, you know, there's been people in Kat's group that have reported that they were very sensitive to the sun before and now they're not because they're restoring, restoring their niacin. And I mean, I used to think this was crazy. People would say the more you use sunscreen, the more you're going to burn. <laughs> and but I, I do believe it now. I think it's just like a, a vicious, a vicious circle, you know, switching us on to one of those salvage pathways instead of just restoring the original de novo pathway in your body to take care of the rest. As long as you're providing it with the proper amount of um, sunlight on the skin and into your eyes. But um, oh, and then. The D, the D is just hugely important. It's just hugely important because it's um, it's going to help with our circadian rhythm, which has to do with our serotonin and our melatonin. I mean, so it's just it's just imperative that we have the proper amount of um, our body is synthesizing the proper amount of, of D3 um, because there's even studies out about how when you start restoring your circadian rhythm that your DNA, because when you, when you sleep at night, when your body takes the serotonin and converts it into melatonin and you get, you go into that deep restorative sleep, that's when your body's doing the majority of the healing. So if you are not producing enough serotonin and then we could get into antidepressants and all that and how they mess up that cycle and you, you feel better temporarily, but ultimately you're just really, really hurting yourself by being on them. And I'm not putting down anybody who is on them because I know it's, um, it's very difficult, but it, it is definitely one of those things. And all the research is out on that too, um, mm -hmm. that you're going to feel better temporarily, but long-term it's just, it's just wreaking havoc on your body. Um, right. so, you know, people might want to consider trying to wean off of them. Um, and get if they are going to try the protocol because I think it will help with that a lot because a lot of the depression has to do with not having enough serotonin and that whole serotonin melatonin cycle. And um, cats did have melatonin in his protocol for a short period. And um, I mean, I kind of agreed with it, but I kind of didn't because I think it's one of those things where you, 
I mean, I had a saying, it's like, you're not going to supplement your way out of niacin deficiency and right. things that are neurotransmitters and stuff like, like that in our body. Like, I just don't think you can put a pill in your mouth and have, it's just not going to be the same as what we can synthesize our magnificent biochemistry. It's not, it's just not the same. Um, and your body knows what to do. So if you're going to mess with a part of that little cycle that it can do perfectly itself, you're just doing a disservice to yourself. Um, and then I just, I, I had a list of the vital functions of um, D3, but um, I mean, there's so many things that vitamin D is, is responsible for in our bodies. Um, uh, it helps with your immune cells. Um, it helps with the proper absorption of calcium, which is a big one. So after you eliminate the fluoride and get your calcium running right, the D can um, put that calcium back in your bones where it belongs. It makes our muscles stronger. It keeps our lungs healthy. Um, it has a lot to do with heart health, regulates kidney function. Um, and then it also... Um, if you have a vitamin constant vitamin D deficiency, then you're going to start messing with your phosphorus and calcium. And that's going to throw off, um, you know, like your minerals and electrolytes and, and a lot of things. So it is, it is, um, it's very important, yeah. not vitamin. <laughs> yeah. Hormone that um, impacts like a, a cascade of events. Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah, I just, there, there has been studies that niacin people with, uh, D deficiency and they give them niacin, not D, will actually raise their D levels. And I challenge anyone to find a study that says that supplementing vitamin D3 has any effect or any benefit as far as diseases of aging goes. High serum levels, yes, will absolutely show benefit and against Alzheimer's and um, autoimmune diseases and, and other things and cancer and whatnot. But there's the nuance, high serum levels, not people supplementing and getting fake high serum levels, but high serum levels naturally. So those have got to be people that are already niacin sufficient and therefore their D is able to be to be used. And I think it's also, you know, I think it's also important to note that that any of these fat soluble vitamins you can take too much of because they are stored in the fat water soluble vitamins. You just pee them out. But um, I, there was a mnemonic that I used in the health food store to remind people not to take too much of any fat soluble vitamin, A, D, E, and K. A, D, E, K. So those were all ones that you could, yeah, A, D, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, and vitamin K. Those are all fat soluble ones. Mm -hmm. And you can't overdo it. There is a condition called hypervitaminosis D. And it's, it's, it's rather serious. And it has to do with, you know, phosphates and bleeding and, and, um, <clears throat> you know, I don't want to do the fear porn thing, but they actually use the same thing mm -hmm. in rat poison. Okay. So this is col 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 I can't say it. Vitamin D3 is called decon. So it's literally called, yeah, yeah, there you go. It's literally used in decon and you can go ahead and look it up. But the reason why it's called decon is because it's made with vitamin D. All right. So anything that's used as a pesticide should put a red flag on people or yeah, pesticide rodent died should be put a red flag on anybody's um, usage and clinicians love it though. It does, it does seem to work. It does suppress oh. symptoms, but that's because some, some health enthusiasts even call this a weak version of prednisone um, and clinicians love it because it, it, it makes them look good because it makes their patients feel better. Right. And even me um, medical doctors are prescribing D3 now. Um, <clears throat> and Adrian was even telling me that the government uh, gives supplement makers raw material, raw D3 to to sell. And that should always ra raise red flags. Right. And they put it in milk. Yeah. And they add it into milk. Gosh, when, when have they ever added anything to anything for our health? So that should raise a red flag there. So I just wanted to, you know, just put the that out there that you don't have to take it. It's too much what they're giving people. And, you know, anything that can be used as a poison needs to needs to get people's alarm bells going on.
Yeah, I was a one, two more quick things. Um, like you can save yourself some money now because you don't need to buy that milk that's more expensive that says fortified with vitamin D. You can just buy the cheaper milk now. <laughs> and um, also, yeah, I did. I was telling Kelsey that the government and a lot of doctors, I don't know about everywhere, but I, I know for myself and some of my other friends that they're give, they give you, your doctor will give you the vitamin D3 for free because the government cares about you so much and it's so safe and effective. So, I mean, I used to take it years ago um, and my doctor was like, oh yeah, it's free. I mean, at the time I should have known, I, like, I should have been like free. No, that's all right. You can keep it. But, <laughs> and I did feel better for a little while. I haven't taken it in year, a couple of years, but um, you know, ultimately it's just, it's just going to cause you a lot of problems. Yeah, well, I fell for it during COVID. I took, yeah. you know, like 20,000 units every day and, and I didn't get sick. And then I stopped taking it and then I got sick. So it's the false sense of security that it provides. Like it just. Yeah, well, you know, the mental, the mental part of not getting sick is, is a big part of not getting sick also. I think people just mm -hmm. discount that a lot as well. Because mm -hmm. I just decided I wasn't going to get COVID and I haven't gotten it. So, and I'm still not going to get it. So. Well done. <laughs> Right. I mean, I guess there's always there's always a chance that you know they could poison us so badly in some way. I might I might get sick, but I just decided I'm not getting sick anymore. <laughs> yeah, fair. Kerstin, that's another thing in the Zelenko pills and on the FLCCC and AFLDS, whatever you call it. Okay, this is another one that they say is going to protect you from COVID, but this is another symptom suppressor basically um you're never going to get this level that they're telling people to take in any kind of you know onion or um where else does it come from uh, the peels or something like that but i think red onion is one of the better sources but from my knowledge what i knew before this is that it's used as a natural histamine antihistamine excuse me and that's like, that's like Benadryl or something. It actually works almost the same as Benadryl and inhibits, I think, COX-1 and COX-2, which are um, a, like, basically, how do I put this? Mm, they, they, they can cause pain, but they're also necessary to, to repair and to detox in their body. And another COX-1 and COX-2, uh, COX-1 inhibitor would be aspirin and ibuprofen. So this is like suppressing the symptoms again and suppressing the histamine. And suppressing histamine, histamine is actually one of your last lines of defense. People talk about mast cell disease and all this histamine release. That's when you know you're not doing so good, when your body has to pull out the histamine card. And, and it's one of the things that the nice and flush clears real quick, too. So all the excess histamine that didn't get used, that's just lying around. Um, it, that's why you, that's part of the reason, just part of it is it gets rid of that extra histamine. And then, you know, once that histamine is clear, then, then you're good. You don't have to play that histamine card anymore. Um, <clears throat> and that's what quercetin does. And actually, we, we came across some studies recently is that uh, that quercetin lowers the flush. OK, and remember how Adrian told you about how the flush is your therapy. OK, so if you're taking quercetin you're, and you're taking niacin, you're going to shut down the therapy. OK, and any any little bit of niacin that you maybe get from diet because you're not supplementing, quercetin is going to kick that out. So it, and it's also going to stop your last line of defenses, too. So you're going to feel a little bit better because you're not getting that histamine release and it's lowering that COX-1 and you get a little pain relief, you know, but you're just you're just suppressing symptoms. You're just driving niacin, more niacin deficiency and going into salvage pathways again. And if you're taking to the niacin and kerosene together, you might as well flush, <laughs> flush them both down the toilet um, because it's not helping you. It's it's inhibiting the niacin. It's getting on some of the same receptors that niacin needs to go into. Uh, you know how Adrian showed you how the, the nicotinamide and the niacin and how they're just a little bit different. Well, the, the niacin receptor... It actually can bind a lot of different things, and quercetin is one of them. And again, that's why you get some relief from the pharmaceutical drugs that look a little bit like nicotinamide, because this receptor can bind a lot of things. But is it going to open the lock? Is it going to create the proper function? Or are you just using a crowbar, basically, to open the door instead of the perfect key that needs to go in that receptor? You'll open the door, maybe, but it's you're going to ruin that door. It's not going to have the same effect that the right things aren't going to go through. The right chain of events is not going to happen if, nice, if quercetin is in place of where the niacin needs to be in your body. 
Yeah, wow. That's really interesting. I know of some people who are being put on this by their, you know, naturopath or whatever for whatever their health needs are, and um, and it's just interesting. So essentially, uh, quercetin is depleting you of your niacin by blocking it or by robbing, by getting to receptors that the niacin should be getting to. It's like a game of musical chairs when you talk about <laughs> receptors and their, their binding agents, right? It's it's just who gets there first. And then if, if niacin's there in the keyhole then or then or in the chair, the, if quercetin's there in the chair, then the niacin can't bind and do its thing. So people taking niacin and quercetin should not bother or is the niacin going to get there first if they kind of are? I'm not sure exactly, but I I, I, I want to give niacin the best chance, especially if people aren't are taking quercetin and not suppling niacin. That's even worse. So now you've got, you know, your your de novo pathways, again, anything you can make from the de novo pathways or it or the little bit that's in your diet, it's it's totally going to cancel that out. Well, um, when she, when Kelsey was talking about the um, the receptor, because the receptor that it's competing for is the um, niacin acetylcholine receptor. So obviously, um, well, there's things called affinity, and it means um, there there's the receptors naturally have like the strongest affinity for certain molecules, and obviously that receptor is going to have the highest affinity affinity for niacin. But if you're taking supplements that are going to be um, like a lesser affinity, you know, you, you want niacin to be in that nicotinic acetylcholine receptor at all times as much as possible. So why would you put something else, you know, why would you supplement with something else that's going to um, not have an, a strong, as, as strong of, as an affinity for that binder, but why would you want to chance it? Because you always want that receptor to be open to receive, um, you know, the, the the therapy that you're taking. Um, and, you know, I just realized in my notes, I completely forgot and left out GPR 109A, Kelsey. So we'll have to do another show on that. Yeah, it is. <laughs> we'll need a couple, we'll need an hour at least for that. <laughs> the big one. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, the big one, vitamin C. And this has been going on since... What, Weston Price? Okay, these super doses of vitamin C and it's in everything. It's even in, you know, your corn syrup high C. Um, so that's that's kind of sus, right? Like <laughs> they're putting it in even fruit snacks and everything like that. And parents go, oh, it's got vitamin C. Vitamin C is another one of those things that can bind in the same receptors of, as niacin. And if it's there sitting in niacin's chair, it's not going to have the same effect. You're going to get some symptom suppression but again it's it doesn't need to be there also it's a very strong antioxidant people who overdose on um, cds chlorine dioxide or mms will often be instructed to take this the problem is taking too many antioxidants is not is again not letting your body decide because your body needs both your body needs to oxidize things and it needs to reduce things and if you're just all on one side, an antioxidant, 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 nothing's really going to get cleared from your body, too. You have to oxidize some things. You have to oxidize some things to get rid of toxins. You have to oxidize some things to get rid of germs that are growing too much and, and overgrowing. Um, you, you need that. And probably, I don't know, a... an orange will do you for a week. It used to back the limeys on the, on the pirate the pirate ships, they had, you know, one lime a week. That's why they were called limeys. And that, that was sufficient to prevent scurvy, right? Um, so the, these super, super doses of vitamin C are not helpful. And I think this is another thing that'll probably shut down your flesh too. Not to mention that most vitamin C is synthetic that you find on the market. And it's also made from mold, GMO mold um, in most, uh, most cases too. So that's not something that, you know, any person who goes into a health food store and is buying this to, to keep from getting sick is going to want. Um, vitamin C will also 
in, in com combination with zinc, there's some studies that it will, it will lower your symptomatic days of a cold by two or three days or something. So again, we're not saying this stuff doesn't work, but are, are you just, you know, are you just putting it, treating your symptoms when you really needed that detox, when you really needed that cold, those cold to get all that stuff out and you're just, you're stopping right. it short when your body should have really gone through the whole process and whole, whole steps to, to, to make you feel better. Um, you know, cause that's what a cold is. It's, it's not, it's not a germ that's causing it. It's your body responding to it to try to purify itself. The runny nose is to get the toxins and bacteria and, and debris and cellular debris out. The cough is to get out, you know, again, toxins and stuff like that. Um, not feeling good, being tired. That's your body telling you, you got to rest. We got to take care of this for you. You know, just lay down, please. So fighting any of these things with, with, with chemicals and, and stopping you from getting sick. You know, pe some people brag, oh, I haven't gotten sick for like, you know, four or five years. And I was the same way, but I had Lyme disease. I was like, I never get a proper cold. This is weird, but obviously my immune system is not doing well because I have Lyme disease. So it didn't feel like anything to brag about. But my kids and my husband would totally get sick, just, you know, snot and coughing and stuff like that. And I would just get even more tired and that sucked. So I, yeah. I wasn't getting the detox because my detox reactions were were shut down. And so um, so probably, you know, I probably tried vitamin C when I was sick, too. And probably that was not helping me. Um, so so well, yeah, that's, I think that's all I have to say about vitamin C. And doesn't um, so we need vitamin C. But at the same time, if you replenish your niacin, uh, won't that help your body replenish or, build, you know, make the appropriate amount of vitamin C that you need for your body and you don't need to supplement it? Even if it was a good form, you wouldn't need to supplement it, right? Yeah. And they say that, like, um, a lot of this has to do with your body will recycle things. So do we have to take a thousand milligrams of calcium a day? Do we have to take a uh, hundred milligrams of vitamin C every day. Well, if we're nice and deficient, we can actually recycle a lot of these things and recycle our iron. That's that's what the spleen does. Recycle uh, plenty of things, copper, zinc, you name it. We're, we're very efficient in like the, in that way. So, <clears throat> and maybe even, and Adrian and I were kind of discussing this too, is we know that dogs and cats make their own vitamin C. Is that something in our junk DNA and that 98% of DNA that was, turned off too, did we used to be able to make vitamin C or maybe we've got a gut species that does it for us? You know, we, we, we don't know. These are questions we really need to know. And um, just the fact that, you know, vitamin C scurvy used to be kept off by a, a one lime a week, um, which is actually quite, quite a small amount, um, will tell you that maybe it's not something you need to be buying. And again, <laughs> lowering your vitamin budget for the week. And I'm, I was so guilty of this or for the month. I was so guilty of this. I was part of the handfuls of hope club. You know, I was just taking thousands, hundreds to thousands of dollars worth of supplements a month and it didn't do a lick for me. So yeah. I really jive with this new information that, and, and I finally filled out validated that, gosh, I didn't have to do all that. The cure was actually right. a lot easier and I didn't have to spend all that money. And yeah, gosh, darn it. But at least I finally know and can spread the word that the cure doesn't have to cost hundreds to thousands of dollars. And I've been through that and I did. I spent thousands of dollars, but maybe you can hear my voice right now and hear us tonight and know that you don't have to. And you can still get better than than any of these vitamins or or hormones are going to make you hmm. it's really interesting too that you and um adrian hypothesize that potentially this could be part of our junk dna because i was just having a casual chat with one with my gp at one of my appointments and he was he was alluding to the fact that he believes that um you know it's it's one of those functions of our dna that has been switched off um, probably epigenetically. So, um, you know, you're not the only ones, at least, you know, connecting the dots on this one. Cool. So next slide, we've got zinc. So, yeah, we're, we're, we're kind of talking about the whole blood builder anti-COVID complex too. And zinc yeah. is another one that, you know, is in the Zelenko pills and was recommended very early on to use with 
hydroxychloroquine, ivermectin, azithromycin, um, and huge doses too, 250 doses. milligrams of zinc sulfate. Yeah, yeah, and that isn't all zinc, but that's probably like 50 milligrams out of, you know, 250 because the sulfate's kind of a big molecule. But anyways, right. but that will make you both. Okay, so if you're not used to that, if you're not taking it on a full stomach, that will totally make you vom. Now, the vomit reaction, that's another defense that your body does too. And that's a sign that maybe you did something wrong or you took something that you weren't supposed to take. And zinc is a big, definitely will induce that. Um, and also going back to the iron too, um, when my son had um, spoon mail and then the, the doctor told us to take, excuse me, that's a sign of low iron. The doctor told us to take, to give him iron and I did, but he ended up, um, he ended up deficient in zinc. So there's this iron zinc copper seesaw that's, that's going on. And looking back, he was so nice and deficient and that's why he couldn't balance all those things. They're, 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 they need to be balanced. They all inter interact with each other. Like copper is kind of the watchman for zinc and, and, and um, keeps it from inhibiting things it shouldn't inhibit. And it also ties back to the iron and keeping the iron in the right form. Um, and, and too much of zinc will, will um, deactivate the enzyme that helps keep iron <laughs> under control and in that water soluble form, less reactive form. So, and this is another one too, that people, um, gosh, this goes back a few decades too, when people were trying to figure out chronic illness and why do these people um, urinate, uh, people who have cryptopyluria um, urinate B6 and zinc. And it's actually a defense mechanism because they tried giving them zinc and B6 you know, thinking that, oh my gosh, they're just hemorrhaging this B6 and zinc. But you, again, you can't do that. It's not that simple. So that actually makes the problem worse that they're experiencing and creating these more crypto pyrols or kinerines or something like that. It's, I'd have to look, check my notes on that again, but this is another one. And low zinc isn't good for you either. High zinc isn't good for you. I think there was that scandal of Zycam a while back. People took too much zinc and they lost their sense of smell, sometimes even permanently. Um, so this is definitely one you can overdo. Any mineral you can overdo. It's like the fat soluble vitamins. You can't overdo minerals. They can get a bit stuck in your body. And that's why your body gets rather small amounts in the diet and then is able to recycle them. So just keep, you know, keep bringing in more minerals and more minerals and more iron and more zinc and more magnesium and potassium. It's just like your body's like, hey, I don't, I don't need all this. And it's, you know, it's going to try to eliminate what it can, but you're, you're going to cause disbalances, especially if you don't have niacin, which is kind of required for pretty much every reaction in your body because it is with ATP and everything your body does requires ATP, requires mm -hmm. energy um, to make something happen, to change something, to move something. Um, to signal something, it all requires ATP and that re proper ATP requires niacin. Wow. Did you have anything you wanted to add on that, Adrian? Um, no, I think that's it, except that maybe I would just add that um, I do agree that sometimes our body, like we will vomit because it's, we want to get, we need to get something, some kind of poison out of our body. But also to keep in mind that as you biochemically restore, and I mean, I don't really, I think this is kind of, it's not like everybody gets this. It's not like we're all common, but you actually can vomit as you restore your niacin because your body is ready to expel. You know, it's not the niacin that's making you vomit. It's because the niacin is getting your body, um, you know, purging. getting it to purging it out. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, things, that are not supposed to be in our body, that our body is perfectly capable of cleaning up a lot of that. Um, mm -hmm. It's gonna come out somewhere. Nose, right. eyes, mouth, ass. Right. <laughs> you know, it's, it's gonna get out. So, I mean, it's it's a good thing. You should look at it as your body is purging out something that it doesn't need. And, you know, same thing when we get colds and flus and stuff like that. It's because our body's trying to get something out um, that's not supposed to be there. And even how people suppress fevers um, and instead of letting the body, again, going back to 
understanding how our bodies work and to let them let our bodies naturally do things in the most perfect way. You, you, you won't, you will never trump the way that your body can biochemically do things. You just won't. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Spot on. Well, I was going to say, we, we wanted to let everybody know that the Nicen protocol has updated since we last did a podcaster about it. And, um, we will link to the latest protocol, but just very simply, it has been, we've talked about it a little bit today, but uh, it has been honed down to two items, not nice and vitamin B3 plus lactoferrin. And there's a very specific ratio that uh, Dr. Katz has figured out. I think it's 6.7 as of right now. Uh, and that is um, for every, um, I think, uh, if you take, say you're taking one gram of niacin, then you're going to divide that by 6.7 and that's going to equal how much lactoferrin you should take. And we're developing an ebook on the niacin protocol and we're going to have all those ratios and we're, and we're going to even have a table. So you can just look up like I'm taking 500 milligrams and how much lactoferrin do I need? I'm taking two grams of niacin, how much lactoferrin do I need? And that way you don't have to do the math. So we'll help you out yeah. with that. Um, and so where to get the um, discounted um, niacin and lactoferrin, you can go to Pure Bulk um, and get um, 10% off using Dimitri Katz um, code. Um, so that'll, that'll help a little bit. But Jody, you were doing the math. You were crunching the numbers on. Yeah. Um, so, well, the lactoferrin is not available at Pure Bulk just yet. So we're, we're okay. using, or I'm using from lactoferrin.co, which is a very high quality brand and they do have bulk as well. So if you got right now, if you got the bulk, the lowest, uh, I think package, I think it's, I can't remember how many grams on, on Pure Bulk of niacin, which is like around 20, $22. And then you got, uh, you know, a, a, the bulk amount from lactoferrin.co, which is about $50. That's $70. I believe that that will last you for this protocol for an entire year, um, depending on your, you know, how much you take. But I'm pretty sure it would last you for a year. So that's $70 a year. And I think that comes out to like $5.38 a month. I mean, you can't get any less expensive than that and more efficient. So like, this is such a breakthrough for us and none of us make money on this protocol, not a dime. Um, we want to get this out to the world. And, um, uh, and now we're, we're hoping if you do go get it at a pure bulk and you use Demetri Katz's uh, discount code, I do believe that he gets a tiny, you know, tiny percentage and he's been doing so much stuff for free. And um, so we really want to help him out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, which leads me to the next slide. Um, if you feel so inclined um, to support Dr. Katz um, and all this amazing research, and um, well, I mean, he's, he's really he's brought all four of us together um, yeah. uh, on this topic anyway, and um, his amazing research and discoveries, yeah, go to homeostasis.com and um, please donate to him, yeah, just to help him out. For his service to humanity. <laughs> exactly. And make sure that you uh, spell it with a three uh, instead of an E um, for B3. So, And so that wraps up our first um, episode because we will be doing more of the suspect supplements, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, Adrian, Kelsey, thank you so much for your insights and, and explanations. Thanks for dumbing it down for those of us who um, aren't so much um, science nerds. Um, Kelsey and I talked about this. We just wanted to also give a thank you to, um, and I don't even know his name. Maybe Kelsey knows his name, but there's a guy in Kat's um, group on uh, homeostasis and um, his name's DA and he tirelessly researches and, and supports Dr. Katz. Like if he comes across something that he thinks is going to um, benefit the protocol. DA really helps Dr. Katz. So I just wanted to give a big shout out to him and thank him for all the hard work and uh, research that he put in along with Dr. Katz. And hopefully people will find value and, and understand what he has sacrificed to get this information to for free to everyone. He's always given it away for free. Um, yeah. So he does deserve to be supported for his, for basically dedicating his life to this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Kelsey, you have um, a couple of channels that you run on Telegram, um, which we will have in the show notes. Um, I believe you run um, Flush Niacin, 
the cure for almost everything and uh, ivermectin kills where you share a lot of information about um, that nasty one. And um, Adrian, can people find you? Have you got? Yeah, I have a Telegram channel as well. It's called, um, well, the name of it's called Quantum Bio Regeneration. But um, if you look for uh, Quantum Biohack, that's me on Telegram. Cool. And okay. We'll put that in the show notes as well. Thank you. So, yeah, so people can yeah. follow you both. Yeah, because Kelsey and I work together on Telegram and we, you know, try to hit things from different angles to get the right information out to the people. You yeah. guys are a good team. The we four are. of us are a good team. We are. <laughs> we're, da team. we're dangerous in a good way. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, awesome. All right, well, I'll make sure that they're in the show notes. Um, and again, thank you, ladies, both so much for your time and um, your research and preparation in presenting this information for us. So thank you. Thank you so yeah. much. Bye, everybody. Awesome. Well, so, um, yeah, those th that information will be in the show notes. And um, as always, you can find us on um, Telegram um, and our Facebook support group. Um, our episodes go up on YouTube, on Spotify and on Odyssey, as well as the Life Force Network. Um, any questions, feel free to email us and, um, and we'll see you back next week, won't we, Jodie? We will.